wanted to do a quick update on how I've been going with my agoraphobia because I've made a fair bit of progress compared to this time last year so um, I've done a more in-depth post over on my blog about um, the beginning steps to overcoming agoraphobia and how to sort of work your way up to getting out of the house because I've certainly mastered that part so <laughs> I just yeah wanted to make a video on um, what I've been up to lately and how I've been doing all that. A couple of months ago I was at the point where I was getting out for walks every day. Um, I was going to the shops occasionally, it kind of depended on how I felt that day. Uh, and I'd done a few big exposure sessions where I'd gone, um, you know, like 20 minutes, half an hour away, which was awesome. But the way I was doing that was I wasn't actually having um, any big panic attack but if I had a really massive panic attack it would sort of knock me on my ass and I would um, you know not go out that day or I would turn the car around from wherever I was going and come home uh, but just recently I've had three separate occasions where I've had a really really massive panic attack but I've had to actually stay in the situation so I just wanted to talk about what happens um, in those kind of situations because it was very interesting the first time I was it was actually Christmas Day and I was driving home uh, and I really needed to get Lila home into bed because it was really really late. She was really grumpy, really tired. It had been a massive day and yeah, she just really needed to go to sleep. And I just left and I was like a minute down the road and I started to absolutely panic. Uh, my legs went numb, my um, arms went numb, I had tunnel vision, I couldn't see properly, I couldn't think properly, I couldn't breathe properly. And that was the point where usually I go, no, nah, I can't do this. And I just, you know, stop what I'm doing and <laughs> run away. But I couldn't do that because I was like, you just need to get Lila home, get her into bed, um, just drive, you're already in the car, just keep going. And so yeah, I had to just keep driving. Um, I was kind of on autopilot. I didn't even really know what I was doing. I just kept moving forward. And then a really weird thing happened and it was that the anxiety and the panic attack just sort of lifted off me. It was like having a cement block on my chest that someone lifted off and it was just like, whew, like it was the most amazing feeling. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is, this is different. I didn't die, I didn't spontaneously combust, um, weird. And so yeah, I got home and I was real chuffed about that, put Lila to bed, all good. There was another time where a similar thing happened. I was going somewhere and I just had to get there because Lila was going mental in the back seat. Yeah, I just had to keep going and it was the same thing again. The panic just sort of lifted off me and it was just the best feeling. And then the third time, um, I had to drive a friend to the bus stop really early in the morning and I don't do early in the morning. Uh, the morning is a really high anxiety time for me because I feel like I need to prepare in order to go somewhere. I need to be like mentally and physically ready to do it. If I have to go somewhere really early in the morning, I'll get up really, really early in the morning so that I have enough time to prepare, bleh, prepare for that. Um, but on this occasion, I had literally just gotten out of bed. I hadn't taken my glasses off. I still had my PJs on. I hadn't eaten. I hadn't even really thought anything. And my friend was like, I'm really late. I need to go to the bus stop. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll drive you there thinking that I would just drive her to the one around the corner from my house, which is like a minute in the car. Um, but when we got in the car, there was a bit of confusion and she was actually going to the bus stop that's at the shopping center. And I was like, oh, um, I don't know if I can drive there. Um, and I'd been drinking the night before, so um, I wasn't feeling the best. And it was all the sort of usual things that I'd think, nah, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't be able to go out in the car that morning. My anxiety would be too high. I wouldn't be able to do it. But there I was in that situation doing it. Yeah, I really started to panic. And it's really bad for me when I'm in the car with someone else. Usually if I'm on my own, I can kind of manage the panic. Uh, but yeah, when, when I'm with someone else, it's just like all bets are off. I just freak out. Uh, and so yeah, I was in the car with her and I'm panicking and I slowed the car right down to like 20 k's. I was like, I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna turn around, I can't do this. But also in the back of my mind, I was like, she's your best friend, you know, she's not gonna judge you if you freak out. Like, just keep driving, just keep driving. You can always turn around if you need to. I don't even know what it was that pushed me on, but I was like, nah, I'm gonna do it. And so I just kept driving and then it was that exact same thing again of the panic attack just sort of flying away and I was like oh my god I feel so good and when I actually got her to the bus stop I like jumped out of the car and gave her a hug and I was like I'm so happy I did it and I was still in my pajamas so it was really ridiculous that I was 
standing at this shopping center in my Star Wars PJs. Yeah, it was just the best feeling. I just felt so excited and so happy. And since those times, especially that last time, it sort of proved to me that when I have a panic attack, nothing really, really bad is gonna happen. And if it does, I'll deal with it when it does happen. But for the most part, the panic just goes away. It's something that people can tell you when you have panic disorder and you go to therapy or whatever and you know they're like nothing bad's gonna happen if you panic but when you're in that situation it's just something that you just can't deal with you just you just want to escape because you can't logically tell yourself that you're gonna be okay because the panic attack itself is illogical you know if you've ever tried to argue with someone who really just can't see any logic you know how frustrating it is that's what it's like trying to argue with yourself when you're having a panic attack you're like you're not gonna die you're not gonna die and your body's like you are gonna die so it's yeah it's really hard to fight against yourself but just those those times where I've been in this situation I've absolutely freaked out and I've come away from it feeling amazing is probably the best results that I've had can we fly um, in in the last like three years of having panic disorder so I'm really really stoked about that and now when I go out um, I'm sort of wanting to panic like a couple of months ago when I'd go out I'd be like I hope I don't panic I hope I don't panic but now I'm like all right let's panic like if I don't panic it's sort of a wasted exposure session because I'm not proving anything to myself but if I do go out and I do panic and I you know I get through it then it's like yeah I've really you know I've really made some progress here so I am just happy to panic and actually that's kind of having the opposite effect because because I'm like welcoming the panic in the panic isn't coming in <laughs> so yeah it's it's kind of cool it's kind of weird I'm still sort of like working my way around it part of me still is really scared to have a panic attack um, I'm kind of not scared that I'm gonna die when I panic I don't even really know what it is that I'm scared of um, but I'm just scared of something happening I guess it's maybe my major thing is embarrassing myself that's what I'm really really um, frightened about so that's I guess why it works better for me when I'm on my own because then you know if I embarrass myself in front of myself then whatever I've done one good exposure where I went to Costco which um, is relatively new in Melbourne uh, and still can be pretty busy and it's pretty intimidating like even the size of the trolleys is like gigantic and that is overwhelming you see a trolley and you're like nope I'm not doing this um, so yeah I did that and I went to a shopping center nearby that um, is just opened and is really busy and um, really anxiety provoking for me because the car park is hectic and just you know all those things that I'm usually like no nah, not doing it um, yeah I managed to do it and I did do it late in the day so um, it wasn't the busiest sort of time but I am ready to go back there and I am ready to do it again and you know if I panic I panic yeah that's just what I wanted to update with because um, I don't know <laughs> Because I guess just for people with agoraphobia, you know, you get told by therapists and doctors and friends and stuff that you can beat it and you'll be okay. But unless you're hearing it from someone who's really been there, you're kind of like, eh, well, you don't know what it's like, you know? So they all mean well, but it's just not the same thing as someone who's been in this situation and knows exactly what you're going through. So um, if you're struggling with agoraphobia or panic disorder at the moment, I know what you're going through and I know it can get better because I'm in a much better place now than I was a year ago or even two years ago uh, or even three years ago so it's taken a while but I'm getting there hopefully next time I update I will have gone somewhere even crazier and hopefully this time next year I'll be going overseas and traveling and stuff who knows I hope you're all doing really well head on over to my blog if you want to check out the post I've done on the very very start of working your way up to get out of the house um, because all the things I wrote about are things that I did um, over the last couple of years to really sort of prepare myself to get out in the scary world um, and now I'm out there and it's not so scary so yeah hopefully I'll do another update soon and um, yeah that is all <laughs>